I believe they are called the Great Plains. With good reason. It is pretty flat. But you see, I'm coming from South Florida, which is, arguably, even flatter. I've always wanted to see this often overlooked part of the country, and we're finally here, Nebraska. And over the next couple of days, we're going to drive through almost the entire Cornhusker state. We are going to see an Oregon Trail landmark, the world's largest railroad classification yard, the capital, Lincoln, the largest city, Omaha. Oh, and we'll also make a side trip to the geographic center of the United States in Lebanon, Kansas. All that coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Our first stop is going to be near the town of Alliance. And fun fact, it was around this area that we had originally planned to see the total solar eclipse of 2017. We eventually settled for western Kentucky because of the weather, but yes, Alliance was on the radar since then. Today, however, we are going to visit a famous roadside attraction here called Carhenge. Here we are. We've made it our first uh, Nebraska attraction. Carhenge. Let's check it out. Graffiti or writing on these places is not allowed. Okay. That makes sense. I guess they don't want it to become a Cadillac ranch, and I can see how people would feel compelled to paint it. There's a slight resemblance. Here they have some information about the art installation, which was built in six days and dedicated on the summer solstice, June 21st of 1987. Over the years, they have added uh, other car-based pieces of art, like the Four Seasons here. Okay, here's a spray-painted one. Other than the artistic value, I actually like it because I'm kind of into cars. I like these things. Here's a tribute to foreign cars, I guess. And a dinosaur. And the spawning salmon. Let's walk around the main work here, the actual car hinge, what we came to see. And as I said, I'm kind of into cars. And most of these seem to be from the 50s and the 60s, some maybe even the 70s, which are my favorite decades. We have all these pigeons living in the cars as well. It's a Cadillac. Someday, we might return and visit the other attractions here in Alliance, which is actually larger and nicer than I expected. But as you probably know, I'm on a mission, Pennsylvania or bust, and I have just a little over two weeks, and I want to see something in each state between here and there. By the way, we are getting really bad mileage today, maybe because it is windy, maybe we are going against the wind, but 10, 10 miles per gallon. We went down to nine point something earlier, and uh, we've been holding at 65 miles per hour. It shouldn't be uh, that bad. It is what it is. You see, not as flat as we were led to believe. These, of course, are the Nebraska sand hills, basically grass stabilized sand dunes.
Our destination today is Cat's Bluffs. We can already see them, kind of, in the distance. They were an important landmark in the Oregon Trail, one that marked the point where the Great Plains started giving way to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. This is where we're gonna spend the night. Hey, Walmart. With a view. Definitely a nice view of the bluffs from the Walmart parking lot. Tomorrow, I'm gonna try and visit, but for now, I need my beauty rest. Enjoy the sunset and um, see you tomorrow. Very foggy morning here, but hopefully by the time we get to the bluffs... Oh wow, look at that! It is starting to burn off before our very eyes. Hmm, there's no one here. Good morning. It says no oversized vehicles or trailers on Summit Road, so um, I guess that settles it. I'm just gonna have some breakfast and continue towards the Chimney Rock. I guess I could have unhitched and take the Summit Road, but first, it is still very foggy, so perhaps not the best views. And second, I don't really feel like unhitching this morning. Something else, this Scott's Bluffs, huh? I wasn't expecting this. It is partially engulfed in the morning haze. Well, here we are, and hopefully the, the fog will lift soon and we'll be able to, to see it in all its glory. <laughs> Hear the cow? There are cows all over the place. Let's go into the visitor center and museum. Oh no. Apparently, the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails all came through here along the North Platte River on the Platte Valley. The Pony Express too, by the way. So yeah, Chimney Rock, very, very well-known landmark. Here they have a timeline with old pictures and paintings. I love seeing this kind of thing. Chimney Rock. Well, way back when, before 1869, before we had the train, this Platte Valley apparently, this Platte Valley was the route to the west, you know, the, the, the trail. And um, and apparently this uh, was a very symbolic moment when people saw the chimney rock along the way because it meant that, you know, tougher terrain uh, was up, up ahead. And it's pretty much the beginning of the West. I mean, the Rocky Mountains are a few hours by car going that way. It's practically a symbol of Nebraska. Nowadays it's on the license plate and everywhere else. So. I'm very glad that, we, that I got to see it. Now we continue back east. There's a lot of stuff to see. It is normally $3 to see the museum. But if you have the, the annual pass for the national parks, even though this is a state facility, they do give you a $1 discount, so it's $2. And the museum is nice, it's okay, there's a lot of information. You know, it's, uh, it's mostly geared towards uh, children, I believe, but it, it, the information is there. Uh, regardless, also, uh, they show you a movie, like a 10 minute movie, which is pretty good. And uh, 
yeah, lots of, a lot of history. Well, now we continue east and uh, we have about a two and a half hour drive to our next point of interest. Blue skies, it's gonna be blue skies now that the fog is burning up. Lots of cows everywhere. This is cow country for sure. Nebraska, I can't believe I'm in Nebraska. <laughs> well, yeah, coming from Florida, Nebraska always seemed like this faraway land in the middle of the country that no one really talks much about. So I'm so thrilled to be able to see it in person and explore it a little bit. Lots of train traffic in this area, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Entering Central Time Zone. We just lost an hour. I see lots of trains, so this must be it. It is called the Golden Spike Tower, and it has an observation deck that overlooks Union Pacific's North Platte Bailey Yard, the largest one in the world. Here they have a hand car and a passenger car. Let's go inside. As you enter, they show you a movie about how the rail yard works, and it's truly fascinating. First of all, this place is massive, and all the sorting, you know, the moving of the cars, is done by gravity. They just push the cars downhill and switch the tracks so they go to the appropriate train, and that's how they assemble the trains going towards different destinations. The logistics of such an operation must be mind-boggling. I still can't believe it is all done by gravity, and they do repair and maintain the locomotives here too. There's always something going on. Several things at the same time, actually. 24-7. This is definitely worth a stop if you are in central Nebraska, especially if you are a train buff. There's Minitini, and they have a museum with paraphernalia from the passenger travel days, a timeline, pictures, a model of the diesel shop where they maintain all the locomotives, and uh, here's a graphical representation of the yard, and more trains coming and going, non-stop, all the time. Must be like air traffic control, but with trains. Wait, wouldn't that be train traffic control? Never mind. It is quite the operation and fascinating to see how they um, sort all the the wagons that go to different places and, and how they basically build the train, you know, car by car. I didn't, I didn't know it was done that way. And one of the reasons why, well, the main reason why they chose this, this spot here, this city, is because it is exactly at the central point in the continental United States. It's, um, in fact, now we're going to the to the geographical center. That's our next spot. But even even back in the day of the of the pilgrims coming west, you know, this was like a gathering point of people coming from different areas, and then they followed the Platte River, uh, going west. And uh, and when when you know the, the, when the railroad started, Helen Wheels, I think that's the name it was called, the, the town and. Uh, and even from back then, this is this used to be the hub. Very cool. <sighs> We've got three more hours. We might not even make it. We'll see. Yeah, I was hoping to see the geographic center of the lower 48 today, which is just south of here in Kansas. And I was actually hoping to spend the night in Kansas. But it is getting late. And it's been a long drive. And today I am not feeling 100% for some reason. I'm just going to drive as much as possible. And then tomorrow we'll visit the geographic center near Lebanon, Kansas. Oh, the joys of having a short trailer. Hmm, 
What is that? I've seen that somewhere before. Maybe a YouTuber I follow was here. I don't know. Archway, exit now. Let's go for it. I thought it was going to be more like a place to eat or like a mall, rest area or something. I don't know where I got that idea. Nice bison here, by the way. But it's looking more and more like some kind of theme park. The Great Platte River Road Archway. Let's go inside and see what it's all about. And I just found out they are about to close. Oh well. Well, I went in there to ask and uh, it's $12 to see it. It's basically a museum and it goes over uh, I-80. Yeah, if it was earlier, I would have done the museum at least just to see the, the archway and all that. But, uh, I mean, in the end, what's $12, $12 in the great scheme of things? But, um, they're about to close. Once again, we're going to make it another Walmart night. And tomorrow, tomorrow will be another day. Morning. Let's go into Kansas. Check it out, an alpaca. And we're in Kansas, and I totally missed the sign. No worries, I'll be back this way. And here we are, the geographical center of the lower 48. Well, yes, we've made it to another one of those extreme points, if you will, uh, which is one of the purposes of this uh, road trip, and this is the geographical center of the lower 48 here in near Lebanon, Kansas, and uh, what I hear is they determined the place uh, by uh, by making a cutout in cardboard of the country, or was it cardboard or, or wood, and where, wherever it balanced in the middle, that's how they determined that this was uh, the geographical center of the lower 48, further away from any natural or, or land border. They have a chapel, they have another monument here, and uh, no, it's really cool, really cool that we finally made it to this place. And uh, now we continue towards Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. We're going back into Nebraska, totally gonna sheet um, and put a Kansas sticker, even though this is the only thing that we're gonna do in Kansas uh, on this particular trip. But we cheated in Montana, we can sheet in Kansas too, right? Commemorating. Latitude 3950, longitude 9835. Uh, I'm in Kansas. Who would have thought it, huh? back to Nebraska and here on the Nebraska side they have a large pullout so I'm gonna take the picture with the Kansas sign real quick and continue all of a sudden we've got sunshine as it gets cloudy once again, we are now on I-80, which at this point goes perfectly due west and straight as an arrow through this flat land. This is Lincoln, the state capital, and I'm not going to stop right now. I'll be back tomorrow. The KOA we're staying at is actually almost halfway between Lincoln and Omaha, so it'll be very convenient to visit both cities. Three long hours later, here we are. We'll go exploring tomorrow after I take the Colorado in for an oil change. Good night. Good afternoon, actually. Let's go explore. 
Someone once told me that the Nebraska Capitol was an Art Deco masterpiece, and in reality I've learned that it is a mixture of styles, none of which is actually Art Deco, but still very impressive. I found parking, and uh, here we are. They have this bison carved on both sides of the entrance. Pretty tall building too. It was for many years the tallest building in Nebraska, visible for over 20 miles in this flat land. And that was the whole point of building a tall capital building here, for it to stand out. Equality before the law is actually Nebraska's state motto, adopted in 1867. The building itself was constructed of Indiana limestone from 1922 to 1932, and it is very distinct for sure compared to other capital buildings, except for Louisiana perhaps, which used this one as a model. Let's step inside. There's a tour in progress, and I think I'm going to join it. I'm crashing the tour. Here's the door to the East Chamber, which is no longer in use because Nebraska nowadays has what is called a unicameral system, in which they don't have a House and a Senate, there's just one nonpartisan legislative body. We were one of the first states in the country to install one of these newfangled electric voting boards. Next, the Supreme Court. 8,000 individual pieces of carved walnut comprise the ceiling. And notice it is a coffered design. The boxes help with the acoustics of the courtroom. Let's go to the top. This is pretty tiny. 14 floor. Ooh, nice. Check out the ceiling as the lamp aligns with it. Some kind of symbol, perhaps? Hmm. Very nice views of downtown from up here, that's for sure. There's St. Mary's Catholic Church, Lincoln Mall. There's the Colorado parked down there, the first Christian church, the governor's mansion. That industrial looking building is the ADM grain elevator and milling facility. It is a nice building to just walk around and explore. I was just uh, talking to the docent in there and uh, I expressed, you know, my observation that it kind of looks like the one in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Same style, you know, tall tower. And he told me that the Louisiana one was copied from this one because they made it a little taller and that's how Nebraska ended up with the second tallest uh, capital building in the nation. Things you learn. Let's drive by the governor's mansion. Relatively modest, I guess. At least he doesn't have a long commute, huh? This interesting church here next to St. Mary's is the First Baptist. By the way, we totally missed the statue of Lincoln on the one side of the Capitol building we didn't see, and of course, to say that we visited Lincoln would be a stretch. We just came, saw the capital, and left. At least we saw something. Now let's go to Omaha.
It's the Mutual of Omaha. I think I'm gonna park right here. This is downtown Omaha. And to be honest, I haven't done all that much research on what to see or do. I know there's a lake with a fountain that kind of looks like the Jadot in Geneva, Switzerland. And there's this area, Old Market. There's Midtown Crossing and a bunch of good breweries. And at some point, I have to have an Omaha steak, right? So we'll see as much as possible with whatever daylight we have left. And here they have the scooters too. Called the Heartland of America Park. There's that fountain I was talking about. It's a rainbow. I don't think this is the Heartland of America Park. I think I inadvertently walked into the Conagra Brands headquarters. Former headquarters, actually. I hear they recently moved to Chicago. Well, I tried to get to that park that has the, the water fountain. And I accidentally went into the Conagra headquarters and then all the streets seem to be closed, so maybe I'll go in the car later. Actually, I think now we are on the right path. There's the fountain. I guess they only turn on the big jet at certain times. Yeah, those cicadas were kind of annoying. Look at that rainbow. I didn't film it, but I got all wet because I was walking around and and the fountain goes up like every five minutes. And the wind, you know, brought the water all the way here and I got all wet. Isn't that beautiful? There's a bridge here over the railroad tracks. And I do believe this is the river. This is, of course, the Missouri River. And that on the other side is, look at the rainbow. That rainbow is produced by the fountain. Incredible. It's very faint. I hope you can see it. And uh, there's, uh, well, I do believe on the Iowa side, uh, there are casinos, huh? Well, yeah, the Missouri River, this is Nebraska. That is Iowa. And uh, yeah, now let's go get some to eat before that fountain fires up again and I get all wet once again. Oh, we must move quickly because the fountain <laughs> It's gonna spew all that water on us now. You see how the wind is pushing the water this way? Actually, that looks so beautiful. It is probably worth getting wet. That's pretty cool when the wind is blowing this way. We got all wet. Let's go back to the old market historic district. It has all these red brick buildings, some dating back to the late 19th century, when Omaha was a great railroad center connecting the settled east with the wide open west. It is nowadays, as you can see, an entertainment district, and there's a brewery somewhere around here. I know there has to be. That's it. That's it. That's the whole trip. This is the cigar lounge. You know how much I like a city with street musicians. Very picturesque area with the cobblestone streets, the red brick buildings. You see, only cell phone photos around. You see? This is called the Passageway, apparently one of the most photographed spots in all of Omaha. 
and I can see why. Well, never say I don't follow instructions. I'm using my phone. Spaghetti works. Okay, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Upstream Brewing Company. I'm gonna have my customary IPA and uh, one of the best ribeye steaks I've ever had. Seems legit. All right, let's get out of here. All right, it would have been a sin uh, to leave Omaha without having an Omaha steak, and that's exactly what I did. Now, uh, let's go around the block. Pretty much, let's go look for the car. All right. Here we have some street art. and gentrified, which could be a good combination actually. And here we are parked. We are now in this area called Midtown Crossing. So I'm just gonna park for a few minutes and walk around a little bit. We're running out of daylight real quick now. But needless to say, we've seen very little of uh, Omaha here. Of anywhere in this area. We've done uh, everything kind of in a rush. And that was the whole idea, you know, at this part of the trip. Just uh, do as much as possible in as little time as possible. And uh, But I've seen enough that I know I want to return to this area. Maybe we'll do like the Midwest in this coming spring that would be a good idea just you know drive like to Kansas City and from there you know visit this whole area of the country that is to be honest overlooked by most and it's very nice That's all from Nebraska. Tomorrow we'll enter a new state, Iowa, then Minnesota, and then a change of plans. But more about that in the next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in